Hello crafty friends, my name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And in today's video, I'm going to be making a Wednesday Addams inspired card using Spellbinder's latest stitch die of the month. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. A new month means that it is time for new club kits at Spellbinders. And starting this month, January 2023, I'm going to be featuring a few each month here on my channel. Now, as always, I will have links in the description box below if you want to check them out. I'm sure you're going to fall in love with the kits too. In today's video, I'm going to be featuring the new Nested Stitched Burst, which is the January 2023 Stitch Die of the Month. Now, you can add on some coordinating sentiments. This is called Sentimental Greetings, and it really does have a lot of great sentiments. But because I'm going to do a little Wednesday Adams inspired card, I will actually be using... Spellbinders Paint Your World Sentiments. I thought these went just a little bit better with the theme of my card, and I'm either going to use Thanks for Coloring in My World or You Color Me Happy. Because if you've watched Wednesday Adams, you know there's that big stained glass window in their dorm room, and one half is full color and one half is just plain black and white. So I want kind of a transition like that on my card. So I thought one of those sentiments would work great. As I go into the process, I will tell you about other tools and products that I bring in. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, you can put those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started, I'm going to be die cutting the piece that I'll be stitching here in just a minute. Because my cardstock is a little bit flimsy, I did die cut two and I used the outside most piece along with one of the center portions. Now the center portion doesn't actually cut out, but it does come with a die that if you want to cut it out to be its own piece, you can do that. Next, I brought in some liquid glue in a fine tip bottle, and I'm going to add some to the back of one of these pieces. I tried to concentrate mostly on the edges, and then did a little on the inside too. Now, I don't have to adhere it together completely or all the way across the cardstock, because later I will, of course, be stitching these two pieces together. I placed a clear block on top of those two pieces and gave them about five minutes to dry. To get started on the stitching, I'm going to be using some white floss. This is six strands, but I did go ahead and pull it apart for two sets of three strands. So once this first little bit is finished, I already have some off to the right to re-thread my needle with. Now for mine today, I want the left side to be black and white, so I am going to stitch everything on the left half with the white thread. I did some super simple back stitching for my card. The hardest part of this whole thing was probably finding the next hole to bring the needle up through. Now for myself, when I start stitching, I leave a tail on the back and then I kind of catch that with the other stitches as I continue. Now I tried a couple different ways to tie it off. Sometimes I literally tied it off in a knot on the back, but toward the end, I just put some adhesive in the center of the back of the cardstock and I would just pull my loose ends to that and you'll get a peek at that later. I won't make you watch the whole process, but I thought you might like to see little clips as my stitching progresses. So you'll see that I go through the white and then I bring in the next floss, which it was part of a tie dye floss pack. And then I stitch the right half with that for the more colorful side. Now, while I work on that, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. These are just fun little questions I like to ask from time to time so we can get to know each other a little bit better. Today I would like to know, have you ever stitched on any of your cards? If you have, let me know maybe how often you do it. And if you haven't, let me know if maybe after today's video you'll consider it. 
You can leave your answer in the comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know you've answered and would like me to see it. I have stitched on cards in the past. It was usually maybe a couple French knots or maybe a monogram or a short word. This is the most extensive I have ever done on a card. And I have to tell you, now that I've done it, I cannot wait to stitch more cards. This would be something great where I could die cut these pieces and maybe just stitch some as I'm upstairs with my family in the evenings. I can't wait to hear about your stitching experience. Here's a look at the finished stitched piece. I'll show you the back here so you can see how I ended up bringing all the tails to the center for the rest of the stitching. I want to have a sentiment in the middle, so off camera I die cut a white cardstock circle and I'm going to be using some inks in the same colors as the tie dye thread to do a little ink blending on this piece. I'm going to keep the same theme with the left side is going to be mostly black and white and the right side will be color and I'm going to ink blend just a little of each of those three colors in from the right edge. Now I did make sure that I put colors together that if they blended they wouldn't make a brown so I went from the top pink, yellow, and then green. I did try to stick toward just the right half, but it extended a little bit, and I think that's okay for kind of that thought of going from black and white into color. For this sentiment, I ended up deciding on Thanks for Coloring in My World, and I'm going to be using a black ink to stamp it in the center of the ink blended circle. To hold the circle in place while I stamped, I am using my sticky mat. That way if I have to stamp it twice, it's going to stay exactly where I need it. But it ended up stamping beautifully the first time. Unfortunately, I forgot to turn on my camera for the next step. But what I did is I added the stitched piece and the circle to the front of a black card base and both of those layers were added with foam tape. Now for the inside, I cut a piece of white cardstock and I cleaned off my blending brushes there at the bottom to bring some of that color from the front to the inside. This will also allow for the sender to write a personal message. To finish off the card, I found the perfect Spellbinders gems in my stash. These are the color essentials in the crystal mix. Some of these are kind of a white shiny gem and then the other ones are like a holographic or an AB gem which is perfect because the left side I can stick with that black and white theme and on the right the gems kind of pick up the color from the stitching around it. I scattered these around that center portion and here are some close-up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made this Wednesday inspired card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Why don't you let me know in that comment section below if you have watched the Wednesday series and if you enjoyed it or not. I know that for me and my family, we are definitely looking forward to season two. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.